All right, hello everyone. I have um, updated my out, uh, overlay a little bit here. I uh, watched a couple of videos and this is what I came up with. So I see I have two viewers. So hello out there to whomever is watching. Welcome, thanks for coming and stopping by. I'm just going to read some scholarly literature for you. I'm a music education scholar, so... Oh, hello, Winnie. This is Winnie. So, uh, everything that I will be reading will be in that vein of research. Uh, today is about rote instruction. Rote instruction would be um, playing or teaching without looking at the written notation for the music. Winnie. So we're just going to hopefully have Winnie lay down on her couch. She has a couch just for herself back there. Uh, and if you want to let me know if the music is too loud or if I'm too quiet or one of those two things, feel free to drop in chat and uh, let's get started. All right, so I'll always start with the abstract. And, oh, the article is titled Rote Instruction in Secondary Instrumental Music Classrooms, a review of the literature by Alyssa N. Gray. Rote, Rote versus note beginning instrumental pedagogy has been an active topic for music educators. Traditional method books have often comprised a significant portion of beginning instrumental curricula, though content has varied and may have been based on convention. Advocates of rote before note approach have recommended that singing, movement, developing aural skills, teaching expressiveness, and creativity may provide students with enhanced contextual knowledge and experiences to better learn to read notation. However, there may be gaps in research of music regarding and teaching uh, there may be gaps in research of music reading and teaching method. This lit literature review includes a discussion of the history uh, lost my place there. Discussion of the history of rote and note education in the United States, an overview of five major pedagogical approaches, and an examination of music reading and performance research. The article is intended to initiate a discussion of teaching methods, practices, and curriculum study for developing literacy and performance skills in secondary instrumental classrooms. All right. Introduction. The rote versus note pedagogy has been an active topic within music education. As Asmus stated, most teachers tend to agree that the ability to perform from notation is important. According to music reading research, quote, nothing in the literature indicates a stronger relationship between performance abilities and music reading achievement, end quote. Other scholars have suggested that there may be benefits. I'm going to try to move this so that she's not in the way so much. Other scholars have suggested that there may be benefits to a sound before sight approach when teaching beginning instrumentalists. Pedagogues uh, Delcroze, Orff, Suzuki, Kodai, and Gordon have advocated for sound before sight approaches to music education and literacy that have remained mainstream ideas in music education. Gosh, I'm going to be butchering a lot of names in this one, it seems. Goodmud, Goodmon, daughter. This guy. I'm gonna move my chat over to this window. There we go. Suggested that hey. Suggested that problems with music reading are due to complex and varied factors that can impede fluency and that music reading is a highly specialized skill that needs to be carefully taught. 
However, mass-produced methods and text during the 1800s enabled increased access to educational materials and propelled reading notation as a standard form of instruction. Cat hair on my glasses. I wonder where that came from. Are you calm down now? In case anyone was wondering, Winnie is now happy. She's making me absolutely uncomfortable by laying on my lap, but boy, is she happy. Uh, one outcome of the abundance of resources was that non-musician school teachers were able to use printed texts to teach music literacy in their classrooms. Over time, teacher emphasis has shifted from instruction that focused on interpretation, improvisation, and composition to technique and interpretation. While many music teachers have agreed that while many music teachers have agreed that not reading notation is an important objective in music education, others have, have observed a relationship between extended technical practice and decreased student interest that may have negatively affected program retention. There, Winnie is on her couch. Good. One researcher found that gifted musicians left programs after failing to adequately learn to read notation. Gruno, Grunau, Gruno, however, stated that even every person has the potential to learn to sing, engage in rhythmic movement, read, write, create, improvise, and play a musical instrument. Teachers have expressed concerns concern about the relationship between attrition and retention rates and student engagement. Authors have, arth, authors, my gosh, have suggested that students may maintain interest throughout perform, through, through performance of known music, creative, creativity, improvisation, and feelings of accomplishment. The first... Uh, okay. The choice to teach sound or symbol first remains an active topic in music teaching. The purpose of this literature review are to examine past influences of rote and note pedagogy on music education, to discuss five major approaches, and to explore related research studies. The review concludes with implications for a secondary instrumental music instruction. Review of the Literature Origins of the Pedagogical Divide As early as 1721, there was disagreement in New England between two major educational philosophies, teaching by rote or by note. Two texts were written that year, one that advocated for teaching orally and another that proposed reading from the beginning. Minister Tufts Minister Tufts wrote an introduction to the singing of psalm tunes, which replaced note heads with solfege symbols and used rote instruction. Reverend Walter penned the grounds and rules of music explained, in which students were immediately encouraged to read music. When high-speed printing was made possible in the 19th century, music texts became more readily available to the public, resulting in an abundance of publications and increased discussions about sight before sound approaches. In 1838, Lowell Mason began working in Boston schools using an experimental music curriculum inspired by the philosophy of Johann, Johann Pestalozzi. He recommended an approach to education that advocated concepts by teach, be te, uh, advocated concepts be taught through direct experience. Gabrielson Schulter Schuler oh. Abel's et al. Right? Yeah. Wrote that it was Joseph Naif a member of Pestalozzi's staff in Europe who transferred Pe Pestalozzi's concepts to the field of music when he opened an elementary school in the United States in 1809. However, other researchers have suggested it was Swiss educators Negili and Pfeiffer who adapted Pestalozzian principles for music education. William Woodbridge, 
who brought them to the United States, and Lowell Mason, who implemented the ideas in the public music education. Before transitioning to public education, Lowell Mason was a singing school master. His view of music education radically differed from the reading-centered methods of singing schools. He believed that individuals should hear and sing a song by rote before learning to read the notation. As the first music teacher appointed by Boston Public Schools, Mason determined the initial method for teaching music to children in public education and was known by many as the father of public school music in the United States. As word of his methods and success spread, more school districts included music and his ideas into their curricula. Pursuant to the introduction of music in public schools, public school courses, an extensive number of method books and music series texts were published between the years 1865 and 1900. In 1870, Luther Mason, unrelated to Lowell Mason, published the National Music Course, which favored the rote approach. Holt and Wheeler Tufts responded in 1883 by creating the normal music course, which advocated the study of notation, tonality, and intervals before singing a song to facilitate students' abilities to read and sing music at sight. In 1895, public school headmaster Ripley and trained musician Tapper published the Natural Music Course, a predominantly note method that combined aspects of the rote approach. The 1898 Modern Music Series by Forsman and Smith was the first complete set of texts that employed the compromise approach. The compromise approach became a forerunner of some methods used in the 20th, throughout the 20th century. There have been numerous philosophies of music education in the United States over a nearly 300 year period, including the singing school's approach and the sight before, sound before sight method. During the 20th century, new advances emerging in, the music, edu- in music education that employed singing, creative movement, expressiveness, and improvisation as pathways to musicianship. Mu- musicianship. Developing both within and outside the United States, five individuals transformed music teaching pedagogy. Delcros, Orff, Suzuki, Kodai, and Gordon. Though the individuals' philosophies varied, they each agreed on the importance of developing oral skills, creative expression through sound and movement, and teaching by rote. Since 1965, their ideas have been, quote, among the most influential in classroom and instrumental programs. The first of the new approaches introduced, oh, sorry, five major pedagogical approaches. The first of the new approaches introduced into the curriculum in in the United States was the 1913 edition of Delcro's Eurythmics. The Delcro's philosophy pervade the idea that ear training, rhythmic body movement, improvisation, singing, and dancing should be the basis of children's education and that students should perceive music aesthetically before consciously. According to Delcros, children who were technically advanced were weak orally and in music expression. He noticed rhythmic performances performance deficiencies, including tempo fluctuation, lack of accurate accents, and unbalanced phrasing. In his observations, Delcros perceived that children who were incapable of performing music with rhythmic accuracy could in fact move themselves rhythmically. A firm believer that children should experience music with their whole bodies, Delcros advocated that teachers should first encourage students' spontaneous and intuitive movement to music. During the 1920s, Carl Orff studied the methods of Delcros and choreography Rudolf Laban and became interested in developing a new approach to music education. He and another pupil of Delcros named Dorothy Gunther I'm guessing Gunther, together opened the Gunther School, a school founded on the curriculum that combined music and movement. Orff later collaborated with instrument maker Carl Mandler and created the collection of xylophones, metallophones, and glockenspiels, high-quality instruments to be used by children studying with his approach. Orff encouraged teachers to use rhymes, games, songs, movements, 
and playing instruments as ways to engage children in creative mu music making. Activities could also integrate singing, movement, and notational exercises. Learning through imitation, regular use of ostinato, body percussion, and rhythmic speech. Across five books, Orff and pupil Gun Gunold Keatman, Music for Kinder, introduced students to concepts including the pentatonic scale and improvisation, major tonalities and limited polyphony, dominant and subdominant chords, Aeolian, Dorian, and Phrygian modes, and in Book 5, Advanced Difficulty of Music and the Use of Minor Tonalities. The next innovation in music education appeared at the 1957 Ohio American String Teachers Association meeting. An incredulous audience of educators watched as 685 Japanese children aged four years and older played Bach's double concerto in a mass concert, demonstrating evidence of the teaching philosophy currently referred to as the Suzuki method. John Kendall attended the meeting, visited Japan, and later collaborated with Suzuki to create an adapted series called Listen and Play for use in the United States. Suzuki believed that talent was not inborn, but could be trained throughout practice and repetition. In his mother tongue approach, children were to be immersed in music from the beginning of their lives and first taught by purposeful exposure to high quality recordings. Reading notation was withheld until a teacher felt the child was ready, as learning by rote was thought to enable a beginner to focus on tone, intonation, music phrasing, and correct posture. Other tenets included a strong emphasis on listening to professional recordings, per parent involvement, and the extensive use of imitation and repetition. Advanced students were encouraged to continue using recordings when learning to read notation. Zoltan Kodai also advocated that students develop aural awareness before introducing traditional music notation. Kodai's ideas were unique among his contemporaries in that they placed singing at the center of component as a central component of students' learning. The Kodai concept was brought to the United States in 1962 by Mary Helen Richards and altered to emphasize experiential learning including singing, chanting, moving, listening, and the use of solfege and rhythm syllables. Notable Kodai educator Denise Bacon viewed the movement as an innovative way to teach music literacy as well as a new educational philosophy. Though singing was a major component of the approach, Bacon stated that it was important for students to transfer their vocal knowledge to instruments. In 1969, Bacon created the Kodai Musical Training Institute, and 1977, she established the Kodai Center of America. In the mid-2000s, Kodai educators such as <laughs> uh, John... Oh, I know how to say his name, but I can't remember at the moment. Fire... 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 Fire Robin. There we go. Fire Robin. Susan Brumfeld... Uh, Mihail Houlihan and Philip Taka pursued new research-centered variations to the approach. Their ideas included testing simple and compound meter simultaneously, teaching simple and compound meter simultaneously, using American folk music, and presenting the name of a new element orally to students without notation. Edwin Gordon was another strong component of research-based education and spent several decades investigating and developing what he called music learning theory based on the conception concept of audiation, or the ability to mentally hear and comprehend music whether or not it is present. Unlike Delcro's Orff and Kodai, who did not intend for their approaches to be adopted as complete methods, Gordon strove to create a systematic, sequential, and comprehensive theory from which students could effectively accomplish long-term goals, such as music literacy. Gordon proposed that a student's development developed audiation skills were a prerequisite to understanding a sense of tonality and meter and for demonstrating intelligent listening to music, theoretical understanding, and music literacy. 
He suggested that audiation ability could be improved through a comprehensive framework of learning sequence activities. Gordon felt that students should first sing and move to songs and learn tonal and rhythmic patterns by rote before attempting reading and writing, allowing for aural development and a synthesis of skills that would transfer to visual understanding of conventional literature. Okay, so those are the five big methods that had been developed. Now we're on to music reading research. Uh, there may be gaps in music reading research examining topics such as teaching method, such as teaching method, reading acquisition, and effectiveness of instruction. One researcher examined the music reading research of Western staff notation and found that methods of instruction were mostly based on convention. <sighs> Goodman's daughter, Good, Goodman's daughter, that makes sense, doesn't it? Goodman's daughter? <laughs> I, I'm so sorry to that person. Stated, surprisingly, little conscious effort has been made to improve music reading instruction through comprehensive study of the tenets of music reading. And research on music reading skills in adult experts is more advanced than research on music reading acquisition in childhood. Asmus also marked, remarked that there was virtually no research on how long it took to proficiently sight-read music and stated that the profession of music education had lost sight of the goal of music literacy. Goodman's daughter further wrote, that teachers of students struggling to develop reading fluency did not have much more than intuition on which to base their strategies. There may be less research pertaining to young populations and rote teaching methods. Draves et al. stated that although published music research has significantly increased, quote, little gain has been made in the percentage of studies involving subjects from birth through 12th grade, end quote. The researchers reviewed music education research subjects in three major journals between 1991 and 2005 and observed that the most frequently studied population was college undergraduates. I have definitely found that to be true. There is not a lot of research outside of that. It's challenging to do research outside of that because of it. Um, they found that the percentage of middle school subjects studied the ten year the ten the years instrumental ensembles typically began had remained between five and eleven percent since 1961. The researchers noted that Schmidt and Zedzinski Zedzinski maybe study encompassing the years 75 to 90 found elementary students to be examined most followed by college-level students. In a different study, Sheridan noted a scarcity of empirical research on the Kodai approach outside of Kodai Envoy the ad and advocated the pursuit of research-based studies on other publications. Wang and Sogin, Sogin? Wang and Sogin stated that no research had been attempted to, quote, show how instruction based on the Orfsch or schoolwork method is dis distinguished from other music instruction. Wow. And that the context of ORF related research in the preceding 30 years had varied so widely that comparisons could not be made across studies to attribute to effectiveness of the approach. I just want to read without butchering a name. Oh my gosh, it's throwing me for a loop. I'm so sorry. Thebolt? Bolt, I'm guessing, examined a history of Suzuki's meditated, mediated pedagogy. See, I can't even read anymore. Mediated pedagogy and concluded that research was needed that explored a focus on recorded songs over sheet music as a medium of, for, of instruction for beginning string students. There may also be gaps in doctoral dissertation research examining string and band classroom instruction. Mm hmm. Kantorsky analyzed string dissertations between 36 and 92 and found that techniques and performance practice had accounted for almost half of paper topics, while less than 28% focused on technique and skills. 
String class research accounted for approximately 5% of dissertation topics. However, the reduced quantity of methods and curriculum research may have been related to a portion of the time period examined predating the in introduction of Suzuki in the United States. In Cavett's analysis of dissertations focused on band, the most frequently researched areas were instructional strategies and instructional materials. Most of the dissertations attempted to test the effect of a particular procedure or methodology on music achievement. Cavett noted that beginning band instruction had constituted a significant portion of instrumental music of uh, the last half of the 20th century, yet little doctoral research had been done in the area. Yarborough? 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 Uh, suggested that a decrease in published doctoral dissertations in the Journal of Research in Music Education was related to a growing community of experienced researchers. Listen, when people start citing me, I just want them to say, Phil said this, Phil found this, this is what Phil figured out. I know normal names are subjective, and I'm not saying anybody has an abnormal name, but there are names that are more common in the English language and are therefore easier to pronounce, and there are zero of those names in this article. But if this is what I'm going to be doing, if this is what I'm going to be streaming, I'm going to have to continue giving this a try. So here we go. That's my apologies to everybody. I'm sorry. This article is full of people that with, with difficult to pronounce names. Here I go again. Considerations for developing music skills. Various researchers have recommended that students begin music instruction with singing, oral development, and movement before transferring ideas to a new activity, such as reading notation. Others has, have advocated that diverse preparatory ex exercises that precede formal written instruction may help students to develop comprehension. Bernard synthesized research on singing in instrumental music education and suggested that educators use vocalization methods, such as movable dough solfege, to cultivate performance achievement, aural skills, error detection, and aural, aural visual discrimination. Singing had been used as a precursor to performing selections on instruments in band method books from the 19, from 1984 Listen, Move, Sing, Play, to the recent Jump Right In, the instrumental series. Hash and Lipperotti, Lipperot, Lipperotti, suggested that singing may help improve instrumental intonation. Though students have experienced difficulties reading music, Goodman's daughter recommended against asso associating deficits of notation reading fluency with a lack of music giftedness. Yeah, that's definitely true. Correlation does not equal causation. A variety of prior oral activities, such as singing and listening, may aid music comprehension and skills in one's skills, period. In one study, Goodman's daughter found that students who were able to sight sing a selection demonstrated an improved internal representation of music, not necessarily obtained ex through exclusively reading music on an instrument. In one experimental study, the researchers proposed that some students' amazement when observing pure aural ability was likely due to the lack of requisite music experience to develop the independent skills. Suzuki asserted that students learned beautiful tone through listening to and imitating recordings of professional musicians. Singing and chanting using rhythmic syllables and movable do solmization have been key components of the Kodai approach, as singing is natural for children and a direct means of instruction checking the stream to make sure everything's still okay. No dropped frames. Cool. Do we still have music? Looks 
like it. Let me know if there's anything wrong with the music or if it's too loud or if there's words in it. I just have Apple Music DM, DMCA free stuff rolling in the background. So I think it's without words. However, I did catch one of them with words the other day. So if there happens to be something with words in it and that's throwing anybody off, let me know and I can change the song and try to make it better. I cannot hear because I don't have my monitors in, so I don't know what the songs sound like. Um, Sorry, I have to respond to somebody. see here we were at Sheridan discovered no Sheridan discussed the Kodai concept and stressed the importance of developing children's singing and aural awareness before introducing traditional music notation the ORF approach and Gordon's music learning theory have also been described as emphasizing the importance of singing and chanting as developmental ec- experiences the oral transmission model has been cited as a leading technique for teaching music of other cultures Beginning instrumental students who sing solfege and tonal patterns may demonstrate improved skills when playing by ear and sight reading. Bernard used two beginning band method books to test singing and using solfege with one group versus traditional instruction with the other to measure the ability to play by ear and sight reading achievement. In the initial test, tonal training significantly affected ear playing achievement, but not sight reading. In a follow-up study five months later, both groups had returned to traditional instruction. The experimental group maintained a higher playing by ear achievement test score than the control group, though experimental group scores decreased from the mean of 78.38 to 71.14, while control group scores rose from a mean of 58.1 to 65.24. In a different first-year instrumental music study, Students in, wow, I blinked and it's gone. There it is. Students in three schools, experimental groups, performed long tones, scales, and arpeggios using harmonization and syllables, as well as major and minor tonal patterns. The control group used the same text as the experimental group, Alfred's basic band method, but omitted the tonal patterns and learned exclusively from notation. Contrary to Bernard's findings, the experimental group demonstrated a significant difference in post-test melodic sight reading achievement, as well as a significant increase on the Iowa test of music literacy when orally identifying major and minor tonalities. A variety of components may influence a student's ability to learn to read music notation. Goodman's daughter reviewed music reading research and concluded that there was a significant discrepancy between music reading skills and performance abilities. Others have suggested students may have difficulty learning notation without significant development of their prior music knowledge. As Miss noted, disparities between performance and sight reading abilities in undergraduate music program applicants and suggested that festival requirements may influence secondary ensemble instruction content, leading to a reliance on drill rather than reading. He described some teachers' approaches as a method of instruction that hammers out the notes until the students get it. Britton and Volk have suggested that instrumental teachers may be more comfortable using a traditional approach as found in the majority, in a majority of method books. Preparatory activities may be important for students to experience before learning notation. Schulter advocated that educators consider providing students diverse music opportunities before analyzing reading and conceptualizing notation. The authors of Jump Right In, the instrumental series, recommended that students be engaged in singing and movement activities before beginning instrumental instruction. 
Dalcros also strongly believed that children should fundamentally experience music with their whole bodies, learning to sing, move, and hear. He cautioned against in introducing instruments to children too early and suggested that they wait to begin instruction until they are capable of experiencing music sensations and demonstrating significant oral development. Suzuki encouraged parents to play music recordings for children within their first year of life. Orff recommended that teachers combine movement, singing, games, drama, and playing instruments to form a larger creative arts experience. Researchers in one study observed teachers who had completed the master's level of schoolwork training. Participants incorporated playing, singing, movement, and notational activities into the lesson. Others have suggested that students may benefit from focusing on one new activity at a time rather than simultaneously learning letter names, fingerings, and notation. Uh, the challenges associated with teaching music reading skills have prompted many music educators to abandon music reading instruction or at least minimize the emphasis on music literacy. There appear to be a common... There appear to be common instructional concepts that teachers tend to address with beginning instrumentalists. Singletary surveyed 187 directors who had taught beginning band for at least one year and asked them to rank and identify concepts and skills deemed fundamental to music to beginning instrumental experience. Teachers felt that the most fundamental concepts were posture, instrument carriage, 98%, Tone quality, 97%, air and breathing, 96%, and note literacy, 90%. Composition, 6%, and improvisation, 5%, were taught less frequently. Items the teachers considered listed consistently listed lower in two rankings including included singing, style, expression, ear training, tonality, analytical listening, music discrimination, conducting, form, composition, and improvisation. In a different study, Worthy and Thompson also found that beginning band teachers frequently addressed posture and instrument carriage. However, the emphasis on correct instrument posture in fundamental classes may have been related to the nature of beginning band instruction. Teachers' focus on music reading was consistent with conclusions from other educators. I need to take a little break. I'm a milk drinker. I like milk. I'm strange, but I drink more milk than I do water. So give me a second here. Pick it back up at Method Books. <clears throat> Method Books are common instructional tools in beginning instrumental settings. Bernard recommended that educators consider music and pedagogical issues when selecting a method or text. As several researchers have found, method books have often been used as the basis for a curriculum in beginning instru instrumental instruction. After analyzing 20 beginning band methods, Sampson identified a variety of instru instructional, rhythmic, tonal, and graphic deficiencies. Britton found that a majority of methods have emphasized traditional instruction and used number counting systems. In one study, Singletary, just this a little bit. In one study, Singletary wrote that beginning band methods have often been used as a primary or supplementary source of instructional materials designed to facilitate learning in heter heter her oh I forget how to say it. heterogene her had. <laughs> Go ahead, make fun of me, it's fine. Hurrah, head, 
draw heterogene. I know you can say it heterogeneous, but there's like a smoother way to say it. Head herod no heterogeneous. Heterogeneous is that it? Mixed settings. Vogue stated that teachers' selections of books that used a notation method, music facts, and sight reading were in response to increasingly rigorous curricula in reading, math, and science. Grutzmacher, well, that's a good name, Grutzmacher, disagreed with traditional instruction and suggested that a beginning method book be developed that include tonal patterns as a core approach in addition to rhythmic and technical instruction. Grunow et al. held similar views and made a rhythm and tonal pattern instruction and made rhythm and tonal pattern instruction a central tenant of their book series. Though the Orff Music for Kinder collection included various patterns in ostinati, it was not until the 12 years preceding a study of master Orff teachers that textbooks explaining the teaching approach and a curriculum sequence appeared. A majority of method books have emphasized drill and techniques such as scales, rhythm, articulation, and finger exercises with little melodic interest. Britton and Sheldon analyzed authentic and contrived source material from six band method books. They defined authentic music as sourced elsewhere, such as a symphony excerpt, or, and contrived as written to present a technical issue such as a rhythm. Authentic music selections constituted 40% in essential elements, 48% in standard of excellence, 56 in Belwin's 21st century band method, 57% in the Yamaha Advantage, 63% in accent on achievement of exercises compared with 100% in the Universal Teacher Historical Method. I have to check, check out what, what that, that is, is, the Universal, Universal Teacher, Teacher Historical, Historical Method. method. Textbook, Textbook exercises have primarily related fingerings to notation rather than to sound. Sloboda? Sloboda suggested students primarily want to learn to perform familiar music and that method books with unfamiliar content can decrease student motivation. Some scholars have proposed the use of American folk music as literature for instruction or supplemental material. On average, method books have contained one third of material from the United States. Really? Hmm. Authors have suggested that students may learn faster when formal notation is taught using music, patterns, and styles students are familiar with. Goodman's daughter, examined music reading research and concluded that recognizable structures such as patterns, chords, phrasings, and tonality assisted the development of literacy skills. The researcher recommended that music should be on structures of pitch rather than on, rather than on individual notes. One inherent challenge of notation-based method books that Samson noted has been a too rapid progression of exercises intended to develop instrumental technique and reading ability. Britton stated that quickly advancing texts can be especially difficult given that some schools do not have a dedicated music specialist and some students miss substantive substan substantive educational experiences during their elementary years. Method book content may originate from a variety of sources. Britton and Sheldon conducted a cultural analysis, content analysis of five modern and one historical band method book. The number of tonal melodies ranged from 27 to 173, with a significant number of pieces labeled as contrived or des designated for instrument-specific techniques. The historical book contained 100% authentic pieces and several eight-bar songs with lyrics. 
It also contained 2% folk music, I got stuck in my head. How could it be 100% authentic and 2% folk? But I suppose folk can be authentic as well. That's what that pause was for. Moving on, while there was, there was as high as 57% in other books, folk music in the United States, England, France, and Germany constituted a majority of selections. Composers most often included were Mozart, Brahms, Beethoven, Offenbach, and Stephen F. Foster, though even Mozart and Beethoven appeared no more than three to four times in the current method books, each thus representing approximately 2% of the book. The researchers noted an increase, an increase over 80 years of publications using smaller, ordered sequences highlighting particular concepts for mastery purposes. A variety of teaching techniques have been used in instrumental textbooks. B, I've seen this name so many times, I've never tried to say it out loud. Bio? I'm going with bio. Bio did a comparative analysis of nine selected beginning band method books from the abundant supply of method books currently in publication. The methods used different procedures for counting rhythm, including the Eastman system, i.e. 1, T, 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 really, Gordon, due to data, syllables mimicking articulation, tu or ta, and the breath impulse method. Two books introduced cut time, only one used to four meter, and two included 5464 four, and 74. One of the books used imitative, imi, imitative singing as a preparation for performance. After examining tonal content, Bio proposed a need for additional opportunities for students to experience and perform minor tonality. The article concluded with the recommendation that directors weigh the strengths and weaknesses of texts with their personal teaching philosophies. In a previous analysis of beginning methods, Samson concluded that publishers and teachers had not sufficiently communicated about philosophical approaches and structures of method books. Hash proposed that descriptive research investigating how students and teachers use method books could be used when designing future texts. Authors have suggested that method books that emphasize technical practice and teach rhythm reading th through intellection. There are so many words that are just not made to say out loud. Intellectuality De deconstructing beat relationships may hinder students from learning to play music literature. In one study, Britain observed that students who initially learned to read rhythm in elementary school used a mnemonic approach where more successful students used a traditional number counting system. Sheehan found that whether performing a rhythm orally or with notation, I just got stuck because I'm wondering if I know Sheehan. I need to look in the references to see if that's who I think it is. Uh, students required fewer trials using syllables, though not significantly so. In a method book review, Bio asserted that research results had demonstrated non-mathematic non-mathematical syllabic approaches may be at least as effective as the traditional method which relies on recitation of numbers. In one literature review, Goodman's daughter identified several research studies in which speech cues were found effective when teaching rhythmic patterns. Authors have recommended the inclusion of supplemental activities and additional content in beginning instrumental instruction and method books. Previous revisions of content and design have been mainly cosmetic rather than based on advances in understanding how music is learned. 
And most modern method books begin with the assumption that students have had no prior music instruction. Schuler also stated that though thousands of students have been taught through method books, instructional materials could be improved by including current research. Grinot suggested that beginning instrumental teachers can include activities such as singing and chanting songs, tonal patterns, and rhythm patterns to account for any potential deficient areas and improve students' instrumental, <laughs> instrumental achievement. After analyzing method books, Sampson stated that texts frequently lacked sufficient challenging rhythms, did not include enough solo material or use, use of chromatics, and had too few rounds and canons. Grutzmacher, I forgot how to say it, Grutzmacher, recommended that a tonal pattern approach be the core of beginning instrumental method books. Through, though method book instruction has often constituted a significant portion of beginning band curricula, students may be more interested in learning familiar songs, exploring and improvising than practicing technical exercises. Bio suggested that using familiar music within method books can provide a means to sustain student interest and develop familiarity with a variety of phrasing and styles. Playing by ear has been found to provide groundwork for students to be able to sight read, play from memory, improvise, and perform rehearsed music. Authors have advocated that students lost my place. I'm so hard to monitor the chat, monitor the stream, and keep my eye on what's going on, keep my eye on what I'm reading. Authors have advocated that students may develop greater music skill and comprehension from initially experiencing music by rote than from forming basic proficiencies through technical exercises in method books. Aural and rote instruction effectiveness. Several researchers have explored relationships between oral and or rote instruction and student access. McPherson and Gabrielson yeah, suggested from McPherson's three-year longitudinal yeah, longitudinal study that examined relationships between music performance and environmental variables that playing by ear may enhance overall musical music growth and provide meaningful and enjoyable learning. In a separate study, students who received oral training scored highest of all groups on both Watkins, Farman, I've never heard of that, sight reading, and prepared piece post tests. Grutzmacher investigated relationships between tonal pattern instruction, performance achievement, and oral development in first year instrumentalists. The experimental group scored significantly higher on orally identifying major and minor tonalities and in melodic sight reading achievement, but there was no significant difference between each group's reading recognition. Conversely, Bernard reported that students who received oral instruction did not score higher on sight reading tests, on a sight reading test, though they showed significant gains in playing by ear achievement. In a study by McDonald, it's an old study. It was a terrible joke. In a study by McDonald, students, <laughs> I'm gonna need a minute. Students in the treatment group received rote instruction while it was either that or a Big Mac joke and I didn't know how to do a Big Mac joke. <laughs> Students in the treatment group received rote instruction while the control group used a recorder method book. At the conclusion of the study, the experimental group scored higher in all post-test areas, including rhythm, melody, and recorder technique. Students who received rote and oral instruction
students who receive rote and oral instruction may demonstrate improved tone quality and characteristic sound. Spurdy compared a group of traditionally taught beginner clarinet students with an experimental group that used an adapted Suzuki rote instructional method. After the experimental period, students performed the same music ex exercise and were evaluated by an expert panel of judges who used an adapted Wybru performance scale. Spurdy analyzed the results and found that 89% of students who trained with traditional notation were rated as having poor or unacceptable tone, whereas 71% of the experimental group were rated as having fair, good, or excellent tone. Blaine adapted the Suzuki model to instruct fourth grade trombone and trumpet students and found significant differences between the traditionally taught control group and the modified Suzuki model experimental group on the Wybru performance scale measuring tone and technique. However, the traditionally taught control group performed highest on a Watkins Farnham sight reading test. In addition to enhanced performing skills, oral instruction has been found to improve student auditory and discrimination abilities. Fruin examined students' past acquaintance with melodies and determined that they were better able to perform familiar music and to get recognized and to recognize. Sorry. In another study, Woody and Lehman observed collegiate musicians playing by ear ability in relation to formal or informal training. Students in the informal group required fewer trials to both sing back and play back the melody for accurate performance. Britain examined rhythm counting systems among 131 students participating in a 7th through 9th grade honors band. Though traditional number counting was most frequently employed, students who had used students who had used a mnemonic syllable system in their elementary music classrooms scored significantly higher than students who used traditional counting. Interesting. In his book, Schulter stated that receiving Prior oral instruction can facilitate more student performance time in ensemble rehearsal as students may be better prepared for and able to predict melodic and harmonic content. That's really fascinating. There, there is a school of thought that says we should just start teaching elementary students using the counting system because when we use a syllabic system, they students have to eventually replace the syllabic system with the counting system or they're going to drive their um, secondary teachers absolutely insane using the syllabic system instead of the number system. And that's interesting that even though they mostly, a majority of them, what's it say, 69% of students employ the counting system, those who were taught using a syllabic system in elementary school scored significantly higher on what? Doesn't say. Britain examined rhythmic counting systems among 131 students participating in a 7th through 9th grade honors band. Though traditional number counting was most frequently employed, students who had used a mnemonic syllable system scored significantly higher than student. Significantly higher in what? Accuracy? Rhythmic accuracy, I guess? In his book, Schulter stated that receiving prior oral instruction can facilitate more student performance time. Okay. Huh. 
Implications for Music Education Educators who incorporate rote teaching may help instrumental st students strengthen their performance skills and reading ability. Delcro's, Orff, Suzuki, Kodai, and Gordon approaches can offer varied means of rote instruction and have become primary ways to engage in creative expression through sound and movement. Kodai and Gordon approaches emphasize singing, Delcro's and Orff activities make extensive use of movement, and Suzuki recommended recordings and parental participation. Educators considering teaching sound before symbol can select an approach that resonates with them or combine aspects of each into their own eclectic style. Teachers who employ these rote methods can help students develop their singing voice, creative movement, improvisation ability, and instrumental skills in preparation for reading notation. Beginning music instruction. Sorry. Beginning music instruction with singing before playing instruments may help students develop an enhanced internal representation of music. All children are capable of singing and may have an easier time learning music concepts that are first taught through oral experiences. Teachers can consider singing melodies, harmonies, and bass lines with their students in diverse tonalities and meters as readiness for learning to play a musical instrument. By starting with what music students know and adding new selections, teachers can build a repertoire of sounds as groundwork for instrumental performance and literacy skills. Once students have engaged in extensive singing activities, teachers can ask students to perform the same music on instruments by rote, transferring a familiar melody to a new skill. When students know how a piece is supposed to sound, they can compare an audiated version of the sound of the song with the notes and rhythms they are performing on their instruments. Singing activities may also lead to improved intonation and steady beat. Performing on an instrument while simultaneously developing literacy skills can be challenging for beginners. Learning to play an instrument by rote can allow students to focus on embouchure, characteristic tone, breath support, and developing technical ability. Once beginners have gained proficiency on an instrument, students can compare their performances of familiar melodies to written notation and can begin to identify notes and rhythms. Teachers can also help students by singing and chanting tonal and rhythm, rhythm patterns before performing them on an instrument, later presenting the same figures in written form. Once students have learned the patterns orally, they can perform them on their instrument and later add notation, enabling them to focus on one new task at a time. Many method books have used traditional counting systems and constructed exercises to teach new fingerings or concepts. Student performance ability, however, may develop faster than their music literacy. Beginning instrumentalists who start instruction with a method book are asked to simultaneously learn letter names, fingerings, notation, and how to produce a sound. Students may be overwhelmed by multiple tasks and lose motivation if music is unfamiliar, leading to increased dropout rates. Though relating fingerings to music exercises is a common teaching practice, teachers can consider melodic and cultural content before choosing a method book. Beginning students may learn faster by playing familiar music without the aid of notation before learning to read. Once a student has sufficiently developed their oral skills and engaged in movement, singing, and creative and technical preparatory exercises, they may exhibit improved readiness to approach method books and written notation. Teachers who engage in oral and rote instruction may enhance student overall music growth and provide meaningful and enjoyable experiences. Students who develop extensive oral skills may perform with better rhythm, tone quality, and technique than their peers, and may also learn to play by ear. In addition, tonal and rhythm patterns, pattern instruction may aid reading fluency. After singing and performing familiar music on their instrument, singing, no, students, geez, Students may have an easier time transferring concepts to notation. 
Students who learn using familiar melodies and patterns may demonstrate increased sight reading ability, music memory, and both ensemble and improvisation skills. Students who comprehend what they are learning may experience greater enjoyment and be more likely to continue in their musical pursuits. There you go. That is, uh, what is the title of this again? Wrote Instruction in Secondary Instrumental Music Classrooms, a review of the literature by Alyssa N. Gray. This was published in uh, Update from NAFME. And yeah, I want to see if, nope, it's not the Sheehan that I thought it was. All right, well, that's that. Hope you enjoyed. Um, I certainly learned a couple of things from that. Got some different perspectives. So um, I'll be back with you maybe, well, tomorrow's Christmas Eve. I'm not sure what's gonna happen, if I will have time to do another stream or not. But one way or the other, I have to keep reading. So I will be back. Uh, I'll see you soon. Thanks for stopping by the stream.